All right, so I was able to get Windows 11 on my system, uh, upgraded from Windows 10 to 11, and this isn't a leaked version or anything like that. This is actually from Windows directly, or from Microsoft directly. This is the Windows Insider Preview Edition, or a preview release. And there has been some significant changes since we went ahead and taken a look at it last time, uh, including complete UI changes to the settings, store, uh, things like that. I just went ahead and changed it from uh, my dark theme to light theme because there were some issues with the text right here, for example. Uh, so I want you to actually be able to see what's going on. One thing that's new is there's actually a little welcome screen. So I don't really think Microsoft has done this before, but here it is. So we're just going to go ahead and run through this real quick. Um, we can either skip through or hit getting started. So just a moment, open my OneDrive. No, <laughs> it's probably just going to try to get me to... Uh, Use browser that puts you first. Okay, so it's basically just trying to get you to use the Microsoft products. Use Android phone. Okay, so this is cool. I'll, I'll go ahead and actually just do this right now real quick. So connect your Android. Uh, I have an Android. Okay. All right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if the UI on this because I've actually never used this application before. But so that looks like it's set up. I wonder if you can send a receipt file. So this is something I'm definitely going to play with later. Uh, so next, let's see what else they try to get me to do. You're all set. Welcome to Windows 11. Open tips. So they have a little tip screen here. Uh, there are no tips. Coming soon is one tip. And the tip is that the tips are going to be coming soon. So that is a very helpful tip indeed. But one thing we're going to do is go ahead and first I'm going to do show you a little preview of the Microsoft Store. Actually, before we do that, if you're interested in actually getting this, it's actually a very easy process. Uh, all you do is go to the link in the description that will take you uh, to a page where you log into a Microsoft account and then you can register to become an insider. And once you've done that, then you're going to want to link it up to your PC. And to do that within Windows 10, uh, how do you do it? I posted it on Twitter, but I already forgot. So uh, follow me on Twitter, by the way. That would be rather nice. So yeah, you go to Settings, uh, Update and Security, and then there's a section called Windows Insider. Uh, go ahead and just go through the process with that. It's going to ask you if you want to be in, in either dev, uh, beta, or just regular releases. Pick the developer version. Once you do that, you're probably going to need to restart your computer. And then once your computer is restarted, just go to update like you normally would, and it should give you Windows 11. It's really that easy. So with that said, now we're going to check out the other changes. So this is the Microsoft Store Preview. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do the uh, Android AP, what is it, APK or yeah, APK packages. Uh, we can't sideload Android apps quite yet, and they're not available in here as this is just a preview. But this is the UI changes. It looks pretty cool. It looks like they're going with the kind of mobile theme. But the difference between this and the last time they tried to make a mobile operating system, which uh, Windows 8, is this actually looks good on a desktop. Windows 8 was just, it was like, they tried to put the Windows Phone operating system on a desktop, and that just did not work well. I remember, I think the video is still on this channel. I have a whole video on how to turn off your computer for Windows 8, because I couldn't figure it out right away. You had to like get your mouse and like put it along the edge of the screen and slide it down like it was a freaking touch screen. It, Windows 8 was horrible. <laughs> but yeah, that's the UI changes for the Windows uh, Microsoft Store. Uh, the cool thing is the settings. The settings page is absolutely beautiful. So we saw before it looked like it kind of looked like Windows 10 still. Um, and some of the previews like this was still using like the Windows 10 live tiles and stuff. But this has been completely revamped. This is their uh, personalization page. Uh, I already went through all these settings in a different video. The only changes were the actual uh, UI. So we have our transparency effects. I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to a dark theme, and it's going to take a sec, but we'll see. There we go. Yeah, it does take it a sec, whether you're changing colors or switching themes, turning on and off transparency effects. There's usually like a 5 or 10 second delay, so it's probably just a little bug that they're eventually going to be working out. Uh, you have everything else, show accent, start bar, start bar, start and task bar. Uh, if we go over to like system, for example, here are all your settings. One thing I noticed is if I go over here and click on this little sound and uh, networking thing down here, uh, they're linked together. If you do click on it, you do have your volume control, but there's no uh, quick, easy way to switch your audio devices. 
So you're going to have to click on this settings thing, go up to sound, and then select what audio device you want to use. So that's kind of a con that you can't just change that in there. It's not a huge deal, but that's just kind of taking things away, just like how if I right click on the taskbar, there's taskbar settings and not all the other options that were there before. So that kind of sucks. Uh, if we go into networking, you kind of see what this looks like. It gives you your data usage and all that. I've used 31 gigs in the last 30 days. So I've used 31 gigs in, since I installed this yesterday. Uh, personalization, we saw that apps. This is where you could go to like the add remove programs. So if I go apps and features, here is my app list. And this is where I could actually go ahead and uninstall programs. So that's the where that is now. Under accounts, this is just your Microsoft account stuff. Uh, most of you are probably going to do this with an offline account. But I'm pretty sure if you are going to do this as a... Uh, trying to get Windows 11 through the official way, which is through Microsoft Update, you're gonna to have to have a Microsoft account linked to it with the uh, registration to the Windows Insider. Uh, we have time and day gaming stuff here. So you have the Xbox game bar, captures, game mode, um, and everything else you'd expect, accessibility, privacy, and security. Uh, if I go for developers right here, you could kind of see some of the stuff they give you here. A developer mode, so install apps from any source, including loose files. That's something I would want. Yes. And you have a bunch more stuff here that I'm not going to get into everything. Uh, over here, Windows Update. This looks a little bit better. I do like how this looks. Uh, you can check for updates. You have your advanced options here. One thing Microsoft has made improvements. One of the main issues I had with Microsoft is how they force you to do updates when you turn off, turn on your machine. They won't let you do things. Uh, that doesn't seem like they're doing that anymore, and when you actually schedule updates, it updates when you schedule it, so that's cool. That used to be a major issue. Uh, I remember one time I was, <laughs> I had an essay due, and I had, it, was, it was my fault for trying to do it last second, but I had 10 minutes before I had to leave for a class, and I went to go print it, and my computer started doing the whole update process, and I was just sitting there watching it with anxiety, trying to wait for Microsoft to finish updating so I can print this paper. But hopefully that won't be an issue for either myself or anybody else ever again. It really is a good thing that they are taking some of those things into consideration. So that's really about it. Uh, the reason why I'm on Windows right now is I mentioned this in the live stream. I like to be able to know what I'm talking about when I reference it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Windows 11 for about a month or so, just so I can kind of get familiar with the system, I understand everything that's going on. And then if I'm being critical of it or comparing it to Linux distributions, I'll actually have a good idea of what I'm talking about. So that is why, if you all were wondering. Uh, with all that said, I do hope you have a beautiful day. Uh, I kind of briefly ran over how to do it, but in the description down below, I'll post the links and the steps to go ahead and get this if you're currently running uh, Windows 10. And one thing, do make sure that in your BIOS, I think it's TPM or TMP uh, version 2, you're going to want to enable that chipset in your BIOS and make sure, make sure that Secure Boot is enabled. So with all that said, I do hope you will have a beautiful day and goodbye. <laughs>